Professor Willett, the optimum amount of red meat we should consume is zero. Vegetables do not form heterocyclic amines or any other carcinogens during cooking. Formation of heterocyclic amines is a unique feature of animals, including fish and bird meat, such as chickens and eggs. Fresh fruit and vegetables are mostly made of fiber. Fiber gives food its bulk and helps to move it faster through the digestive tract. Fiber actually absorbs and helps to remove toxins introduced into our body as a result of cooking animal tissues. People in the West dread cancer more than any other disease. Why? Because cancer slowly and often painfully takes over the human body over months or years depending on how quickly it spreads through the various organs. There is now overwhelming evidence from research and direct observation over many years of what happens in people that demonstrates the exact role of animal-based protein in the initiation, promotion and final spread of cancer. Animal protein uh, tends to increase cancer risk and there are multiple, multiple mechanisms, so to speak, or biochemical explanations for this effect. Chemicals play a crucial role in cancer formation. They have become an everyday part of our modern day world. Chemicals are present in pesticides, pollution, and all kinds of industrial waste. Our body has a natural defense mechanism that is able to inactivate all these chemicals and make them harmless. This defense takes place inside cells by an enzyme called mixed function oxidase. When plant-based protein is eaten, even if chemicals enter at the same time, this enzyme is able to inactivate them so they become harmless. However, when animal-based protein is eaten, this defense mechanism turns against us and converts these chemicals into carcinogens. These new dangerous substances then damage the genetic content of our cells. When this damaged DNA is replicated, which occurs when cells divide, cancer cell formation is the actual final result. It is the actual protein contained in flesh from animals that causes our defense system to turn against us. The antibiotics, pesticides, hormones, and all the other multitude of chemicals and toxins we give farm animals to eat are an additional problem. Pure animal protein itself causes our body to rebel in the form of our defense system failing. The bottom line, low animal protein diet represses cancer formation and promotion. In cancer progression, the cancer cells that have grown locally continue to grow and eventually spread to the other organs and throughout the body. The body cannot continue to survive this final damage. The same push and pull effect applies in cancer progression. Animal-based diet accelerates and promotes cancer progression, whereas a plant-based diet slows down or reverses cancer progression. Research has shown that even small changes in the amount of animal-based protein in the diet, such as an increase from 4 to 10 percent, will increase cancer growth and spread. Increasing animal protein beyond 10 percent results in a dramatic increase in cancer growth. The average Western diet contains 15 to 16 percent of animal protein which corresponds to 70 to 100 grams of protein a day. To give you an idea in terms of the food you eat, three chicken nuggets contain seven grams of protein. One and a half ounces of steak contains 13 grams of protein. One ounce of fish contains seven grams of protein. One large egg has seven grams of protein. One ounce of cheese has seven grams. One cup of milk has eight grams. 
To turn on the cancer promoting effect of animal protein, all you have to eat is this, which is basically your average Western diet. Our bodies want protein, need protein, and as long as we provide the amount of protein that meets our needs, everything is fine. Uh, but when we exceed that amount, that's when we get into difficulties by consuming animal based foods. For optimum health, women need to consume no more than 38 grams of protein per day and men no more than 47 grams of protein. You can obtain this more than adequately by eating a variety of whole fruits, vegetables, grains and legumes. It is important to eat these foods whole, not processed. Processing removes most of the naturally occurring vitamins, minerals, antioxidants and other wonderful nutrients which the foods grow naturally. All animal, bird, fish or egg derived protein plays a role in the formation and promotion of cancer. But the most potent so far is casein. Howard Lyman is a fourth generation cattle rancher. In 1979 he developed cancer in the spinal cord. Today Howard Lyman goes around the world talking about the harmful effects of animal protein. The first thing I recommend is to take out dairy. Remember I was born on a dairy farm, the largest dairy farm in the state of Montana. I believe that milk was nature's most perfect food. I believe that milk did a body good. But today I say the first thing you should take out of your diet is dairy. And the reason? 87% of the protein in dairy products is a thing called casein. Casein has been shown in laboratory tests to stimulate the growth of cancerous cells just like pouring gasoline on a fire. Casein is even more concentrated in dairy such as cheese and skim milk from cows, goats and sheep. The connection between dairy intake and cancer is particularly strong for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is now the most commonly diagnosed cancer among men in the United States and other Western countries. It represents about 25% of all cancers. People who consume more animal protein have more so-called insulin-like growth factor, IGF or IGF-1, and they have more of this uh, hormone when they're consuming animal protein sub-based foods and that in turn is consistent with increases in risk for prostate cancer. We know that insulin -like growth factor tends to turn on cancers. Those uh, findings originated with the comparison of, let's say, vegetarians with vegans. Uh, vegetarians, 90% uh, of whom are consuming substantial amounts of dairy products and eggs, still getting a lot of animal protein. They haven't gained that much by just avoiding meat and then still consuming a lot of dairy and eggs. In terms of animal protein, they're still consuming a lot of animal protein. It just comes in a different form. And those people, the vegetarians, tend to have higher levels of this insulin like growth factor than do the vegans who, of course, are avoiding all animal proteins and getting less prostate cancer, by the way. As many as 50% of all men over 70 years have a silent form of prostate cancer which is not yet causing problems. Studies have revealed that men with the highest dairy intakes had about double the risk of total prostate cancer and up to four times the risk of fatal or metastatic whole body spread of prostate cancer compared to low dairy food consumers. Do we have a cure for cancer? Let's hear what Dr. Campbell has to say. If we assume that we're going to find a cure of cancer coming out of a needle or a, or a pill, we're not going to find it, I don't believe. On the other hand, with reference to the question, do we have a cure for cancer? I say yes, absolutely. And what I'm talking about is not the generally assumed uh, suggestion of pills or needles, but rather it's just simply food. Food of the right kind, consumed in the right amounts, uh, right uh, combinations and so forth, 
plant-based foods. Whole plant-based foods have a remarkable effect on being able to reduce the incidence of cancer. The truth is, the most powerful weapon against cancer is the food you choose to eat every day. Animal protein is not the only culprit in causing cancer. Most people today are aware that cholesterol leads to heart and artery disease. But most people are not aware that cholesterol is also associated with increasing the risk of cancer. The fact is, both animal protein and cholesterol are linked to cancer. Blood cholesterol uh, levels have often been associated with coronary heart disease, as we all know. The higher the cholesterol level, the higher the heart disease rates. Um, we learned in China that uh, the higher the cholesterol levels, the higher the risk for cancer as well. And higher cholesterol levels in the body turn out to be a good biomarker for the consumption of animal-based foods and the absence of plant-based foods. So blood cholesterol is, in fact, related to or associated with the emergence of cancer as well as heart disease and some of the other so-called Western type of diseases. The China study found that what in the West would be considered mildly elevated cholesterol was associated with cancers. As blood cholesterol levels decrease from 127 to 90 milligrams per deciliter, there was a decrease in the incidence of cancers of the liver, rectum, colon, lung, breast, childhood and adult leukemia, childhood and adult brain, stomach and throat cancers. The average cholesterol in the US and other Western countries is 215 milligrams per deciliter. The average in China was 127 milligrams. In some provincial areas, the cholesterol was as low as 80. If such relatively low cholesterol levels were associated with an increased incidence of cancer, you can appreciate the much greater risk of cancer occurring on a Western diet. Cancer of the breast is as much of a problem in women as cancer of the prostate is in men. The connection between breast cancer and fat from animal sources has been documented in many studies. High blood cholesterol raises female hormones, especially estrogen. Higher levels of estrogen are associated with an increased incidence of breast cancer. The fact is, both animal protein and cholesterol cause cancer. There is another factor that links animal-based food and cancer, including prostate, as well as all the other diseases of affluence. Vitamin D is produced in our skin by exposure to sunlight. 15 to 30 minutes several times per week is all we need to supply us with adequate vitamin D. This then needs to be converted to the active form which is responsible for keeping cells throughout the body in optimal condition. This supercharged vitamin D has to be made in our kidneys by conversion of the vitamin D made in our skin following sun exposure and that absorbed from the food we eat. This supercharged form has to be made in our body. What we eat, however, is a crucially important determinant to how much supercharged vitamin D is made as well as how well it works once it is made in the kidneys. Because the active form of vitamin D is crucial to maintaining all individual cells in optimal condition, disruption of its work can result in a wide range of diseases. Animal protein has a tendency to block the conversion of vitamin D to the active form. If these low levels persist, the result is prostate cancer, as well as cancer of the breast, colon, osteoporosis, autoimmune diseases, 